Good morning. Um, I just want to show everybody one of my most prized possessions. It is a very old Bible that belonged to my grandmother, my paternal grandmother. She read it every day. Can you see how it? Can you see how it's falling apart? There's a saying, I don't know who came up with it first, it says um, a Bible that is falling apart is owned by somebody who is not falling apart. And she was not falling apart, she totally had it together. I mean, as far as I know, <laughs> I was a kid, I remember her being very loving. And as I got older, very patient <laughs> and supportive. And um, um, I'm very happy that my dad gave me her her Bible. I get to, I mean, she's been gone since I think 1999 is when she died. Um, she was 77 or oh, wait, seven days before her 77th birthday. I think that's what it was. But it's pretty pretty cool. Um, that she um, lived so long. So, anyway, um, I like to uh, carefully look through and see things she underlined. And here's just the verse. Oh, she just put First Samuel seventeen thirty nine, David and Goliath. So I wonder what that is about. Oh, it's got the little things that shows you where the books are. The quite war. What's that? Oh, Judges. I was like, what's JGS? <laughs> okay, First Samuel, let's see, for the 17th chapter. The Bible was not written in chapters and verses and books, by the way. It was that was added later to make it easier to uh, find something. So um, I don't remember who or when it happened, but it's better to, for finding things. So um, First Samuel, there's 17 verse. Oh, what was it? What was it? Oh no, there goes a page. Oh, I don't know. I, I think I should tape it up, but it would. I don't know. I think it, it looks like it has been taped. <laughs> a very old tape. Anyway, um, verse 39. I wonder why she wrote that. What is it? And of course, this is King James Version. So. It's a beautiful language, but nobody can understand it. The way they, they talk, they spoke. 39. Oh, uh, what? Oh, I see how it's laid out. Okay. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. I guess it like started to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. I wonder what proved means. Like, I can't handle them. They're too much. Too heavy. All he needed was a slingshot. and He uh, chose five stones, but he only used two, I think. Like one he shot past Goliath maybe to blind him with the sun and then that one right here so, but it wasn't the slingshot and the stone that won the battle of course against Goliath that big bully it was God it's okay and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone, out a stone, and slang it, 
and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. He was a boy. He was, I don't know how much of a boy. I mean, people lived so long back then. A boy might have been 50, but no. I think he, he was a child, probably a teenager. And all these grown men in their armor were scared. But David had the Lord. So that was all, all he needed. He put his face in the Lord and and he, he won. God can use anybody. So anyway, um, also in this Bible is a story that my grandma wrote, uh, well, uh, about um, her uh, son came in, which is my dad. When he was little, he had a dream and told her about it, and she wrote it down. She said, um, Michael woke me up near dawn on, it was like December 28, 1964, saying, Mother, listen now to my dream. I saw the cross on the hill where Jesus died, and... Margaret saw it there, and Margaret saw it, it's wore out, um, there are crowds there dancing, but, oh my word, it's something spilled there, and we ran and found you, you, my grandma, you said, you cried very hard as we looked upon the cross, I was the youngest, and I couldn't sing the words uh, uh, or do as they did, but I just cried and cried. They killed Jesus on that cross I saw. I felt so alone, except I knew God was there. 1964. He was five years old. My dad was born in 59. And he had this dream. The Holy Spirit is teaching my child by dreams and their meaning. Um by letting him feel the meaning. I like that. I like that story. He's just a little tot, probably in kindergarten. And because of the spirit, he was able to understand the dream. Oh, she put Michael's vision, that's what she called it. So, yeah, pretty cool. Like, look at this page. I, I don't know how to, yeah. Can you read that? <laughs> I don't know. Something on coffee or something spilled on it and smudged it quite a few pages through. But that's, that's cool how that worked out. Like I just talked about David being a child used by God and then I ended up reading that story about my father as a child that was pretty much uh, spoken to or whatever by God. Yeah. Both both youngsters. And again I say God can use anybody. You know, look at Paul. He's the best example probably. He used to be Saul. He got a name change. And he he hated Christians. He thought he thought we were a bunch of freaks. And he was like they needed to be got rid of. So he was killing Christians. And putting him in prison, and then on the road to, to Damascus, was which, which was like a major city, probably like Detroit is in Michigan. Um, he, he was on his way there, he's on the highway or whatever, and to Damascus. And he uh, was like, I'm gonna get them Christians, you know, like you're gonna get rid of them, and you know, things go back to normal. And then Anyway, who knows the story? You know that there was a bright light, like, like not even sunglasses could take care of, of it. And he, all he could do was, was fall to his knees, probably to put his face down in his arms because it was so bright. And that's his only relief. But then, um, then Jesus spoke, and he said, "Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me?" Because you know persecute his people, we persecute Jesus. And he 
so what are you doing? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And that confused me for a long time, but then I, I realized it's Lord, lowercase, like, sir, like, who are you? Who's doing this? And Jesus said, I am Jesus. And it's, it's hard, he said something like, it's hard to kick against these thorns or something, like, like, um, like, it's hard for my people to be my people if you're trying to stop them. It's like trying to run through water, you know, and, and anyway, um, then Paul, Saul, Paul realized that, um, if Jesus was real, they weren't freaks, <laughs> and, and then he, he was converted, he, he became a believer then, um, and because he was behaving extremely, so he, uh, to be converted in an extreme way. <laughs> so, anyway, then, uh, then God told this, uh, guy in Damascus that was a Christian, hey, uh, Saul's coming to your house, he's blind, <laughs> because of the light, and, but he's been converted, and, um, I want you to take care of him until he can see again. And this dude's like, you know who he is, right? He kills Christians. I'm a Christian. You want me to have him at my house? God's like, go ahead. It's okay. So, so he did. So, and then we know that Saul became the Apostle Paul or Saint Paul. God can use anybody. <laughs> so, um, David, the one who killed Goliath, is the man of the hour. Later, he uh, committed adultery. He had somebody killed so he could have his wife, and um, but God still, the Bible still says that David was a man after God's own heart because he was repentant. You know, he messed up. Everybody messes up. Everybody's we're human, and we're supposed to try our best to live as Jesus did. But the only reason Jesus could pull it off is because he's also God. So it's, it's a constant struggle, so we have to take up our cross daily, every day, and drag it along behind us and try to keep up with, with Jesus. So, anyway, this is, uh, I had no idea what all I was going to say, but this is what was on my heart today. I guess this, this vlog or whatever is going to be whatever is burdening me and I think I'm going to make another one um, after this. So. I hope you all have a blessed day.